Uh, hi everyone, it's Gator Russo with the Majestic Rider. I'm here with Apache. We're going to get him to sidle up to us. Good boy. He just learned that not that long ago, so he's doing really well. And uh, I'm going to show you him going out alone, not eating grass. Don't let them eat the grass. All right, so this is the standard bread. It's starting to rain on us, and so hopefully don't get too bad out there. Uh, he does know how to neck rain. He's mostly about his business. He sh they should be at 15, but not all of them are. <laughs> He's a pretty easy going guy. If he gets nervous, he can get a little snorty. He uh, usually doesn't do too much. He just kind of snorts, looks at it, and if you go by it a couple of times, then he doesn't snort anymore. A nice big mud puddle to go through. A little monkey out here, not too bad. I'm riding him in the bitless bridle. He went okay in the bit. He just opens his mouth a little bit and I was just trying to see how he goes in different things. And so far he's doing pretty good in this. Uh, if you're having problems gating, the bitless bridle doesn't help you as much as a bit. It's not as fine tuned, I guess I should say, but you can still do it. It just might take longer. Or you might have to be a little, put a little bit more pressure on him in the bitless bridle than you uh, do when you're communicating with a bit. So if you want to end up with a bitless bridle but you're having uh, gating problems, you might want to start with the bit and then once you got your horse gating well, then convert it over to the bitless bridle if you're trying to get that job done faster. He's got a nice walk. He's got a big stride and he's a bigger horse. He's 15.3. And in the arena, he will get slower so there you got to kind of push him out here he'll kind of just go and if you're brave he's brave if you're not brave he's like well I don't know if I want to go with you that's normal for a lot of horses especially the ones that'll follow along and not give a problem so if you're gonna ride along you kind of you don't want to be a beginner with him you want to be more of an advanced beginner have your trainer be helping you no, we're just going through the mud. You see he's doing good with that. Uh, the trotty horses pick their feet up a little bit higher so they clear more objects versus the pacey ones. They're the ones that kind of just gait. So you need a really sure-footed horse when you're looking at videos and stuff. Look, don't just look at the gait. Um, look and uh, see how high they're picking their feet up. Because if you've got a lot of different difficult terrain, they're going to pick their feet up higher versus the pacey ones or the ones that just gait, usually. So just look. Some, you know, are bred to kind of snap those knees up more. And if you got a breeding line like that in your gated horse, then you might uh, just gait and pick its knees up just fine. So they kind of rolled up the irrigation here. I came out with another horse. So I saw it and it got, you know, scared the other horse. He got by it, but he got a little scared. So let's see what he does with it. So he's kind of looking at it, like, and he sped up a little bit, but that was quite good for a weird object. And there's a bunch of them, so we're going to go buy them a bunch of times. So he, he does have a brain and he thinks it's not just a machine. So. And now he's up here rolling up more. Oh boy. And he's got a mask on too, so he doesn't look totally human. Kind of alien. Oh boy. Uh, you want to sit up tall, bring your energy up, start pushing him. Come on. Oh boy. You're okay. Okay. You're okay. Good job, buddy. So he's never seen that before. I'm sure in his life, even though he's been to the racetrack, that was something weird. And I want you to see what he does. Because that's how you try to fit horses, to sh show you what they do when they're not being great. Not just when they're being great. Okay? And see if it's something you can handle. All he did was go sideways. He kept going. 
Now, if I didn't put any leg on him or steer, he might have turned around and went home. Who wouldn't? Like, why kill yourself if you don't need to? So he's going up these steps really well. So you do got to steer him. Have some clue, unless you're following. You know, and then the horse will just feed off the other horse. So up here, a tree fell down. So we're going to go over that. There's a branch sticking out. Lots of bad footing. You saw he handled that well. So if he wants to look, I'll let him look. Good boy. Keep going by that hole. So if you're looking to have a follower horse, you know, something that's going to follow the other horse through all the stuff, like a husband horse or a guest horse, I think it'd be just fine. And if you're going to go out by yourself, I think he's just fine too if you know what you're doing and have an idea how to ride. And if you don't, you shouldn't be out there alone anyhow. Okay, so this is the real narrow part. I'm letting him put his head down so as you can see. He does have big feet. So I caught himself really well. It kind of went on the side of the hill, but he, he didn't wobble or anything. So let them look at that stuff. They see different than we do, and uh, when it's something weird or you're, it's a step down, they're unaware of the footing, let them put their head down and look at it so it's clearer for them. Otherwise, it's just blurry, and they might not be willing to because they can't see what they're doing. Now, he decided we should go up on the hill because he's not so sure how this footing is. But I just pushed him back into it. That's okay, he's trying to be careful. Let's go this way. All the horses want to get up here and go right because that's home. So we're going to go left and we're going to neck rein him. So you see he went just fine. Okay. So it's nice. This is not a horse you have to frame up a lot to get to gate. You just got to be able to feel the gate, keep the speed. And you might have to elevate his head a little or put it down a little bit. But you don't have to like overly collect him to get him to gate. That's always a bonus, right? because then you can ride them on a looser rein. Uh, there's lots of standard breads out there. You know, sometimes people make them into hunter jumpers or dressage horses and all sorts of things, but they do make great gated horses if you know how to get them <laughs> to gate. So he's just yelling to see if anybody else is out here. That's okay. And, you know, if they trot pretty easily, you can teach them to canter over time. Just know many don't know how to canter because they're not allowed to canter on the harness track. And so it's kind of in their mind that they're not supposed to, like some gated horses. Um, but in time, you can teach them. But, you know, that takes some time and practice. And a lot of people gate don't want to canter anyhow, so... This matters what you're looking for. So he doesn't, uh, at this point in time, canter under saddle. He's 14. And I didn't teach him because it takes a long time to teach some of them to do it. And uh, when he's loose, he mostly trots really fast. So it would be easier to teach this horse to speed rack versus a canter because he can go really fast and he'll stay in his trot or his gait. So um, under saddle, he doesn't speed rack yet, but this is one that probably could do it really, really well. Okay, so we're going to kind of let him pick his footing and see what he does. See how smart he is. So very good. Very good. Some of this, like right here, it's muddy. It's a good test, see if they slide at all, depending on how they move their feet. You know, if they have a lot of overreach, that's a big turkey vulture going over our head. If they have a lot of overreach, then sometimes they slide a little bit in the mud and on rocks and stuff. And those horses will usually do better if you put some back shoes on them if they don't have shoes and uh, 
maybe something for traction to help them so they don't slide. So let's go a little faster. So they stand very smooth. Now when they're trotty and you're going uphill, that's two things that are making them trotty. So you just don't want to kind of sit back. But you stay in a gate just fine. But some will come out of gate or they'll want to canter up that to make it easier for them. And again, if you bring their head down, that'll just make them trottier. Easy ones, you want to bring their head down and make them really drive up those things. What else can I tell you about him? He yeah. in the arena, he's doing really well. He's got his turn on the forehand, a back up, side pass. And now uh, we'll start doing some gates with him. He saddles up nicely. He just has to know that's what you want. Uh, but he has the cue down and he understands. And then he's pretty mellow in the arena. Probably anybody can ride him in there. It's just you got to know how to keep him in gate because the footing's deeper and that can make the horses more on the trolley side. He doesn't mind going through the mud. He's not avoiding that at all. A little faster. Clouds are getting darker. So even downhill, he's staying nicely gated. So this footing right here is not good at all. So the footing gave out. He caught himself just fine. Now we're riding this trail from home. We didn't trail her out. So if you're gonna ride a horse from home and you're looking at horses, it's good to see them ride from home. See how they do once you turn back because lots of horses can get barn sour. And uh, if you just trail her out, well then you wanna see how that horse trailers out because if the person just rides it from home and they never trail her, it might not be good at that. And it doesn't mean the horses won't be good or you know, it won't be a great horse. This means there might be something for you to work on so you just want to be aware of those challenges that might come up good boy okay so so again when a horse hasn't been out by himself in a while which he hasn't then a lot of times they'll scream and that scares people all they're doing is just seeing if any other horses are out here and if anybody's going to answer to them did not put my raincoat on that's what always happens when i put my raincoat on it won't rain and when it's not on it always rains on me So still going downhill, um, he's moving out at about at the same speed. Now we're going to get poor now. <sighs> this happens to me all the time. You think I would keep one on my saddle, but I'm stupid and I don't. Like you saw when I rode Commander, I was in a downpour. Then I actually did have a jacket on because we knew it might happen. But today, you know, it said 30% and then it was fine until I got on the clouds came. Uh, these feathery things scare a lot of horses. He's not worried about those at all, but they do make noise, especially in the wind. They move around. So lots of, you know, when your horse is used to stuff, it will be fine. And when you're buying a horse, they have to get used to your new stuff. You know, it's always nice to see the trails they were on to see if they're like yours. But if yours are totally different, if you're riding down the road and they didn't go down the road, or you're riding in the woods and all they did was ride in open spaces, it's going to take that horse some time to get used to that stuff. Okay. He's been ridden in the open. He's done some dog field trials. He's packed beginners around. And he... 
He's been ridden in the whips. He's been to the beach. He's been to a lot of places. So he's got some good experience, and I think he's doing great with this bitless bridle. So let's go a little faster, see what he does. By himself. So you just kind of, he's getting very nice. So you just keep his head up just a little bit. He usually gets trotty, occasionally he'll get pacey. But he slowed right back down. Okay. Oh boy. Lots of horses, especially when you're going towards home and you speed up. They are not slowing back down. <laughs> They're like, we're going home. And that's great that he doesn't do it. Um, lots of horses can get barn sour. Not because the person selling them did it. Could be, but, uh, but more so people get them and they ride them. And then when you get back to home, you take off all their tack and give them grain and hay and their friends and they're like well I'd like to get that reward a little bit sooner so if I run home maybe she'll give it to me and then people complain but they do the same thing they give it to the horse and then over time they get worse and worse instead of better and better so if you got one that's starting to act up don't wait till it's really bad just start uh you know when you're getting home ride them around tie them up you can uh, so fun you hear me saying that all the time now many times if there's an option to go around a puddle, a horse will go around a puddle if it's smart because if they go through the puddle and the footing gives out, you know, they could die or break their leg or something like that. So people get mad and I go, no, it's the smart ones who don't go through them. <laughs> and you can make them go through it if you know it, but sometimes they are right and they are going to slide and get hurt. So that's why they go around them. But you do got to practice going through puddles with a, if you get a new horse to make sure you can get them through it. But sometimes there is no other option and you have to go through that puddle and he goes through the water just fine you see him running around in the arena but he knows that footing's good there so all right so it's going uphill let's speed up a little bit there's some roots and stuff sticking out and let's see how well he makes it over him he's very sure-footed you see, lots of people don't look at standard breads. They don't even think about horses, but they are. And, yeah, um, you know, walking horses have standard bread in them. A lot of the gated horses are mixes of breeds. And uh, so don't forget about them, especially if you don't have money. They're cheaper. They, the harness ones have great experience, but they do have a tattoo under their mane. But if you train their mane to go over that side, you won't see it if you don't like the tattoo. But they're great, tough horses. So now I'm going to pull on him. I'm going to ask him to go really slow. So he's not pulling, he's doing it. Now I'm going to let him go. Because I want to see if he could do it. But that's the way he's built, he moves out. So you know, whoever buys him should be somebody who likes to move out some. You don't want to buy a horse that moves out a lot and you end up just walking it really slow with quarter horses if you ride with quarter horses then you buy a slow gated horse one with a short stride or you ride with quarter horse people that ride faster okay but if you buy one with a big stride that moves out and try to make it take tiny steps for four hours it might just piss it off and i wouldn't like to do that either so i totally understand because i'm usually a fast walker All right, so we're cutting back through. Glad we're getting closer to home because it's getting darker out here. So we've done all the uh, declines just fine. So this kind of washed out so it looks a little weird to them so I understand when they're thinking like we shouldn't walk on that and it's just sand but the sand has run and you know to them they don't know that okay here comes the narrow part so I'm going a little fast through it but otherwise it's good
we're gonna go over the tree again. So see him slow down? That was a smart horse. He didn't barrel through it. He kind of looked at it and went, oh, okay. That's how we get through it. You have something that bulldozes through stuff when you need it to slow down. It might not slow down. You want something that thinks a little bit, so it's going to help you and get you out of trouble if you get yourself some. So we're going to go by that guy again. So see, this is all normal. He doesn't know what that guy is doing. Don't let them look. We'll see once he starts winding it up, or if Patchy decides he's not afraid, then we'll just go by it. So again, they look from the sides of their head, that's what he's doing. Now, he just started moving, so then I know he's not so scared, and let's go ahead and go. But, now, it looks different as we got closer, so we stopped again, no big deal. We're good, I'm just, okay, thanks. But otherwise, I, I let them stop and look, instead of getting up here. Thank you. He's a little nervous. He's not doing anything bad. He just walked by a little fast. And then you see a bunch of stuff on the left. So I think he did great because this is really weird stuff. Uh, we ride through farmland here. So they see trucks and workers and see there's a thing blowing. That's the scarecrows. And uh, we see lots of weird stuff here. But again, you have to get used to your weird stuff. That just takes time. So when you're gone, you got a new horse and you have a horse that's been at the place for a long time. It's always nice to follow the horse that's been there. So if you're not confident, the horse will get some confidence off of that other horse. That other horse will be telling it, it's all right, don't worry. This is just what we got here and it's not a problem. I haven't been eaten yet, so neither will you. But if you're gonna go out right alone and you're nervous, the best thing to do is just go hand walk them out there, let them see the stuff without you on their back and let them get used to it. And then you can see how they react to stuff. They get freaked out. Well, it's much better you're not on their back when it happens. And that way, when you do get on, you're like, well, he didn't do anything when I rode him past it. I mean, when I hand walked him past it, he was totally fine. So he'll probably be fine when I rode him past it. He might need a little bit more help, but at least you know it's a pretty good horse. Okay. But all, all our trails are different and that's what people don't understand. Some people just ride through the woods. Some of us ride down the street. Some of us ride on trails with bikes and people and all sorts of stuff. And so the horse just has to get used to its new job. That usually takes some time. And uh, horses read people pretty quick, you know, horses read body language and that's how they survive. So a uh, horse will usually figure you out in about five minutes, they got your number down. And it usually takes people a year to figure their horse out. Um, some people that are nervous or, you know, they got a mare instead of a gelding, you know, it can take you two years. It takes a while to form that relationship. So you just gotta know nothing's perfect. It all takes time. Somebody's up there, he doesn't care. So he's coming back about the same speed he left. Yeah, you're a good boy. So overall, I think this is a great guy. And uh, I just started making the video, so I'll try to get some videos of him in other trail places. And when you made it back before it started pouring on us, that's the best news of all. <laughs> we got one water crossing. If you have problems with water, if you can get, even if you go around it on the way out, he went through it just fine, but uh, on the way back, they'll usually go straight right through it because they want to go home. If you're having problems, practice it going towards home or take a lunge rope and go out there and uh, do the sending exercise and lunge your horse through it over and over again until they uh, they understand to go through it. It's no big deal. Wow. 
hope we get it on out there because it was kind of rainy. So we're going to practice now that we're home. We're going to practice going back and forth a little bit unless it starts really raining. Then you can kind of see his gate from up here. And it's good, you know, his stall's over there, so it's always good right by their stall. And you're like, no, you're not done yet. Let's do some more. That wasn't that much. All right, Rami. And then you can practice, you know, if you didn't practice it out on the trail, you practice your turn on the forehands and stuff, and those things just get better and better. But if you don't practice them, how can the horse get better at them? Oh, he did something bad. He threw his head a little bit. <laughs> That's nothing. All right. So once you develop feel in your horse's gait, then you can decide, you know, when you need to help it, how you need to help it. I'm not doing much with him except keeping the same speed. And I'm not bringing his head down, I'm just keeping it up a little bit. And if he's doing good, then just let him go. But you want your range short enough in the beginning with your new horse. That if it starts going out of gate, you're able to help it. And with him, you just kind of have to half halt, bring his head up, unless he gets pacey. He doesn't do that much on trail. He does that a little bit in the arena. And you can hear his little football, little pucka pucka pucka. Okay, let's turn the other way. It's getting windy out. Just a couple more times. It is starting to rain more. I'm having horses that eat pretty easily. All right, now we're going to get off. So I'm going to get off here, not at home. Welcome back, so we may go away from home better, right? Uh, if you put the bitless bridle on, I always loosen this when I turn them because it's working off of their nose, and you got to make it a little bit snug for it to work correctly. So, if you have one, just make sure you know when you're done, you loosen that up because that's all the pressure going on their nose. Uh, it's pouring, 